Alrighty, alrighty. So we're going to be talking about, I have a list. We have a great PDF takeaway on this subject, which is the board interview, the board tips, the board tricks. So a lot of people, first of all, will just talk about the, the general thing, which is you obviously go through the buy-in process. You obviously sign the contract. You put in the purchase application. If they agree to be with you, you have a board interview. It could be one person, it could be 50 people. It could be with your dog. It could be with your kid. It doesn't really matter. They, ha they have the right to pretty much just say, bring your whole family or, or bring whoever gifted you the money, bring them. I had someone that was on vacation. They had to fly back for the interview and then go back on vacation because the board said, if you're not willing to meet on this day at this time, then we're not going to say yes. I've had people get declined for that. So I told the, or actually one time because the board said, fine. And I said, well, what, what are you talking about? You're going to decline them because they couldn't make six and they couldn't make, they said, yes. Yeah. So, you know, it was one of the things that they would have been a great addition to the building as a shareholder, but the board said, no, that was the only time. And it was because of timing properly, whatever boards have egos boards. They want to feel special. They want to feel unique. They want to feel like theirs is the greatest building out there. So you treat them like that. Okay. You don't go against it. You don't go against the tide. You don't say, well, no, why are they asking for that? Why are they doing this? So number one, one is dress properly. You want to go in there. It's all about an interview. It's a board interview. Go in there, dress properly. You don't have to wear a suit and tie. Obviously, if you're wearing a suit and tie to work or if you're wearing nice clothes to work, wear that. Don't come in right from the gym. Don't come in with, you know, unorganized hair and unorganized hair. <laughs> unorganized hair or whatever the case is. Don't come in all sweaty and everything else. You know, go home, put yourself together. Why? Because you only make an impression once. You can only meet the board once. You want to do it right. Most boards, you know, I have, I have a, a deal right now. The, the board is acting like it's a Fifth Avenue $70 million co-op transaction. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not actually saying that to them, of course, but I'm telling the buyer to say, oh, this is completely normal. Meanwhile, I know that the buyer's getting a little frustrated on the amount of documents and things like that that are necessary. It's the same thing when you go and meet them. If the board feels that they're not special enough for you to dress up, bye-bye. Number two is be on time. Okay, there is nothing worse than starting an interview late. There could be times that they say show up at 6.30 and your interview is at 7.15 for multi multiple reasons. Number one is most boards meet just once a month because they say it's the third Thursday of every month or it's the second Tuesday of every month. So they come in, every board member could be five people, it could be 10 people, whatever the case is, know that this is the board meeting this for this month or next month. In other words, they blank, they black out that date on their calendar, their calendar. And if you can't make, make it at that time, they either will deny you or hopefully they'll push it to another day if that's the case, or they'll push you to the next month. They could be on time where they meet with you at 630. Most of the time, two things happen. There's other people. If it's a big building, there's other people that are also interviewing. D depends on what time the other one started and what time yours is starting. In other words, it could go a little over a little bit before. The second thing is they're probably discussing other issues. We have an assessment or we have litigation or we have other co-op packages or or they discuss the issues and the problems. This shareholder said this and, and they have to go through all of that. Third thing, they will ask you potentially personal questions. Personal questions that you're like, why do they even care? Because I'll just tell you this story. This is the best story is that the uh, one of the board, and by the way, the board members, one of them could be in marketing, the other one's an accountant, the other one's an attorney. So each one is coming from a completely different point of view. Here's case in point. So there was a, a story that I heard from uh, a broker. He put in the purchase application, they met with the person, and essentially they had on their tax return this $50 line item that there never is a $50 line item on, on the actual tax return in this area. So it was really interesting is that the board member who is an accountant looked at it and he said, what's this for? And he said, oh, that's for my gun. And that was it, denied. Don't want that in the building. So it's one of those things that it, you can avoid that by saying, hey, listen, I put the gun over here. I have bullets in another case. I put it separately. It's all in locked different areas, things like that. You know, I go on weekends somewhere else to shoot or things like that. The number one thing and the reason I brought that story up is that they're going to ask you questions that are on your purchase application or things that trigger in their mind why they need a gift. Why, why were they at their job for six months? Why, why are there so many job say, you know, you're going from here to there. Why are you hopping around jobs or why, why do you have five dogs or three dogs or, or something like that? Obviously they're not going to probably ask about five dogs because they won't allow five dogs unless you have a massive apartment. <laughs> 
<laughs> be familiar with the purchase application. So in other words, in that case in point, I would have went to the, the buyer and said, hey, listen, and this is not one of the things that I, you typically ask, but you say, listen, this could come up. In other words, this could come up as a second home or that you're buying this for your kid or the kid are, is buying it for their parents or they're gonna ask, why do you own so many houses? And you say, yeah, I have wealth, but they say, well, you know, can you afford this? If you actually default on one of them, is it gonna be this one, is it gonna be that one? Here's, here's the next thing, know your purchase application, the financials, the financing, and the people that wrote the reference letters, okay? Because, you know, I, I can make a whole video about reference letters. Clarity between the co-applicants, okay? So in other words, when you go into this, you have to be clear on any issues that may have arisen. You know, why do you need the gift? What happened with this bankruptcy? Why, why is this in collection? Why are there so many inquiries on your credit report? You have to be in alignment. Well, we are looking at a boat or we we're putting our kid through college or whatever the case is, you have to be in alignment with maybe any of the issues that they came back with. You kind of want to get coached by your agent about this. Don't discuss as many renovations as you want to do, okay? Don't say, I'm going to go in there with a hammer right after we close and just destroy the entire place, okay? They don't want to hear that because that's taking up an elevator. That's probably dust and cleaning. That's also noise, other people in the building that they don't want. So in other words, just if they ask about it, obviously if it's a complete wreck and it's an estate sale and everyone knows it's probably gonna be renovated, just say, oh, you know, we're gonna do it. You know, we're gonna do right now, probably the kitchen and the bathroom. It's one of those things for me, I always say downplay the extent of the work, okay? Not make it a big deal. Don't say, well, I'm gonna replace everything and it's gonna be really loud. Obviously you're not gonna do that. Don't offer, personal information that's not requested. So in other words, political parties, political views, you know, I, I, I helped, I donate to this candidate. You know, you, you don't want to offer up your personal information or things of maybe a divorce or, or, you know, maybe your kids having problems at school or things like that. So in other words, unless they request it, which they shouldn't because that's fair housing, do not discuss the closing and then refinancing. A lot of people say that. They're like, oh, I'm going to close, I'm going to get the money and then I'm going to refinance. I'm going to take that money, I'm going to buy something else. They do want to know but you don't want to tell them that. Post interview requests. So a lot of them will ask for money in escrow, they'll ask for you know a gift letter or something notarized or you know something along that. In other words, maintenance in escrow for a couple of months or years if financially they have like a little bit of an inkling that you may not be able to afford it because if you default then the whole building has to pay for your maintenance. If you have multiple people default in a building, everyone has to pay for your maintenance. Continuing on, I'm not gonna go over this whole thing, but if you go over to the post, uh, which is linked below, you're gonna get, you're gonna be able to download our two page, it's actually three pages now, we've been continuously adding to this PDF, download and it's spot on. Uh, don't expect a decision on the spot. A lot of them, you leave, they talk about it. Should we do it? Should we not do it? it usually takes 24 hours. If it's a condo, you're probably not gonna meet with the board. This is obviously a co-op, but the condo is gonna take 24 hours once they receive the, the purchase application to make a decision and just say, here's the first right of refusal. If it's a co-op, they're gonna go in and say, hey, listen, here's our final request. Here's our final documentation we want. Or yeah, you're cleared to close. Here's the letter saying you're cleared to close. So don't expect it. Am I in? Did I get it? Can we close? Don't expect to <laughs> ask those questions. Do not ask those questions. The broker will get all the information from the managing agent. Let's go over really quick, most often asked questions. Number one is the financials. This is, this is obvious. They wanna make sure the gifting, the co-purchasing, how are you gonna use the apartment? How many dogs do you have? How many people are gonna be living there? What's the relationship between the people? Are you gonna be living and working? And the reason being is that they're protecting the shareholders. This is the number one thing. They are protecting the shareholders. A lot of people, they get emotional and they start saying, screw this board, who cares? They're protecting the people that are already in the building to make sure that you can afford it, to make sure that the, the apartment is gonna be used correctly. They're gonna make sure that they didn't make a bad decision because once you're in, you're in. Uh, financials about obviously, you know, how much money you have, self-employment if that's the case, feel good questions. They'll probably ask you, why do you like the building? Why do you like the area? How do you like work? How do you like the, or how do you know the, the people that wrote reference letters for you? And then they may go over the house rules. So the house rules is if you have an outdoor space, they may say, how are you gonna use the outdoor space? When are you gonna be out there? By the way, you can't play loud music at a certain time on weekends, barbecuing, things like that. You know, this is what is allowed, this is what is not allowed. And then lifestyle questions. Do you smoke? 
which is obviously illegal, marijuana or cigarettes? Do you entertain often? Do you have a lot of people over? Do you play any musical instruments? Do you, what kind of food, if you cook, do you make? In other words, a lot of people, especially in my building, uh, you have tons of food that's being cooked. And you go, you exit the, the elevator and you're like walking through a restaurant, what you feel like. And they may ask other things. Do you see yourself leaving work? Do you like your work? In other words, leaving your job for other careers. Do you, do you see yourself meeting clients here if you're in sales? Things like that. That's pretty much the, the, the down low on interviews. It's gonna get personal. It may get emotional. Don't ask over the top questions, just minor things, things that maybe you know but don't know, just say, oh, where's the closest place that you'd go for, I don't know, bike riding or to the gym or things like that, just corny little questions. You don't wanna ask crazy questions. Why is the roof have an assessment? When are we gonna do the local wall 11? You know, they're like, whoa, this is a nosy person. They're not even a shareholder and they're already asking this. I don't know if we want this, okay? You're kind of just going in like a, like a job interview, okay? You're, you're bantering, you're going back and forth. You wanna see how good you are financially, what you're gonna do with the home and things like that. So if you have any questions, if you want this PDF, which is fantastic, Go over to BPI Live, hop into our buyer's area, and we have a complete breakdown of the entire process of buying an apartment. We have over 20 videos on that. We have 20 posts. So if you have any questions, go over there. If you want the PDF, we can you can download it there. If you're a client, you get it for free. If you're not, then become a client. <laughs> you can get it for free, obviously, on the blog as well. So have an amazing day. Any questions, pop over there. Talk to you soon.